I just like to let everyone know that uh, we're going to be waiting until our last member of the council arrives. The council is comprised of 10 alder persons, and we need seven of them at a meeting to uh, and conduct a meeting and have a quorum. So we'll be uh, taking a, a brief recess until Mary Lynn Donahue arrives. I'd like to call to order the 13th regular meeting of the 2018-2019 Common Council. Would the clerk please read the quote for the day. In a world where you can be anything, be kind. Thank you very much. Would the clerk please call the roll? There are seven present. Um, we have uh, three older persons that are excused, older person Savaglio, older person Trester, and older person Bourne. Uh, next, I'd like to take a moment of silence for two co-workers who passed away this last week. The city is deeply saddened over the sudden death and unexpected loss of two of our co-workers. Carrie Griesmeyer passed away unexpectedly on Thursday the 27th. Kerry joined the Shoreline Metro team in March of 2012 as a Metro Connection paratransit driver. His time with Shoreline Metro, uh, Kerry touched many lives with his caring and thoughtful attitude, outgoing personality, and charisma. He was a model employee who loved his job working at Shoreline Metro. He wasn't afraid to let everyone know how much he enjoyed being a bus driver and know, was known for his willingness to help customers with their transportation needs prior to his employment with Metro Connection. Kerry operated a construction company and for many years was awarded contracts for Sheboygan's sidewalk replacement program. He had a smile that could light up a room. Kerry was well respected and loved by his fellow employees and we missed by all at Shoreline Metro. Larry Hibbelink, 70 of Sheboygan, he passed away unexpectedly again on the 27th. In 1998, Larry started working for the city of Sheboygan and eventually became their lead building and plumbing inspector and where he remained until retiring in 2010 after 22 years of employment with the city of Sheboygan building inspection department. Larry was best known for his great sense of humor and the ability to make any, everyone around him laugh. There wasn't a mechanical problem he couldn't fix and he was always quick to help anyone in need. Please stand and join me in a moment of silence for these two individuals.
Thank you. I'd also like to mention that Alderperson Scott Lewandowski suffered, suffered a stroke and he's currently at Atrium um, Post-Acute Care Unit in Plymouth. So if anyone would like to reach out to him, that's where you can reach him. Next one, we'll go on to the approval of the minutes from our last council meeting. A pledge of Allegiance, please. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, please stand and join for the Pledge of Allegiance. We have some guests here from Shable, Sharon Abel's LTC class, and I'd like to have several of them to come forward and lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Just face the flag here and begin the pledge. United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much for coming this evening and I hope you enjoy the meeting. Thank you. Next, we'll move on to a presentation on the Dimension Care Crisis Task Force of Sheboygan County. They've put together a report, and Mary Pitch, the founder of Embrace Care Management, is here to present a brief program on that report. Mayor, can Mary, we, can please we come forward. 1.3. We will return to the approval of the minutes shortly. <laughs> Please proceed, Mary. First of all, thank you so much for having us here today. Um, my name is Mary Pitch. I am a longtime resident of Sheboygan County, and I'm excited to be able to tell you about our task force. Um, this is a lot of information to get through in a short amount of time, so I'm going to try to buzz through it, and we'll leave a little time for questions if you have it. Um, as you think about a dementia crisis, don't need to answer this out loud, but just in your own minds, what does the term dementia mean to you? What does Alzheimer's mean to you? Do you have a family member who's dealing with it? Maybe when you go out into the community, you're seeing residents living here that are dealing with it. What really is dementia crisis when you think about it? This problem is not going away anytime soon. Nationally, the dementia population is growing drastically as it is in the state of Wisconsin, as it is in our own county here. So this task force was really trying to get ahead of the game here and be ready for this continuation of the issue that's coming. In our community, they live right in their own homes. People with dementia live in facilities. You probably, like I said, run into them at the grocery store. So again, this is a community issue that the task force is addressing. So this really started as a grassroots effort. We are not part of any kind of uh, government agency, though we have some government agencies represented. This was really a grassroots effort of a group of us that got together and said, the care in Sheboygan County related to crisis care really is maybe not where it needs to be, and what can we do to improve that? What we found out very quickly is that there was no systematic approach to how we respond to dementia crisis. And our task force really wanted to work on changing that. There were concerns in facilities. There were concerns through the comm center and how they were being dealt with when a 911 call was being made. There was concerns over how resources were being allocated, both in terms of law enforcement and in terms of fire. There was hospital concerns as to when these residents were ending up in the ER. Did they meet protocol to be able to be admitted into the hospital? So it really was a countywide issue that every player here had some kind of issue and some kind of concern. That's why the task force started. So like I said, we're a very grassroots effort, but we are formal enough that we decided we really did need to have a mission statement and a vision statement. We also have goals that we've created. I'm not going to read these all through to you. 
Um, but basically our goal was to improve the quality of care for those dealing in our county who have crisis when they have dementia. So really what does dementia crisis mean? That was the very first thing that our task force needed to come up with. What really did that mean? Because we weren't just talking about in general dementia care. We were talking very specifically about crisis. And basically what it boils down to is when somebody is dealing with dementia, which basically dementia means that they're having behavioral or excuse me, they're having cognitive issues. So memory issues, sometimes personality changes. When uh, somebody who's dealing with dementia ends up in crisis, it's usually related to behaviors. And those behaviors end up becoming very aggressive. And a lot of times what, what people in the industry know is that there's a lot of approaches that can be used to prevent that from happening and also then to de-escalate the behaviors. But basically, crisis behavior then means, again, when these behaviors start becoming really kind of out of control. And what was happening in facilities is they were calling 911 and expecting oftentimes for them to be taken out of their facility, and it kind of became someone else's issue. Uh, so we, again, needed to really look at all of these steps that were involved. So what we did as a task force, and I'm going to quickly here introduce uh, our group that we've got here to some of our task force members so you have an idea who we have on the team. It'll make more sense as I talk through the process. Um, I don't know if you guys want to stand or just want to raise your hand. We have representatives here from Dawn from Sunny Ridge, Michelle from Pine Haven, Lisa from Aurora, Chuck from Sheboygan EMS and Fire, and Christy from Sheriff's Department Comm Center. In addition, we have um, Jenny from the Alzheimer's Association um, and Jim from the, I'm sorry, the, those people are not here, but I'm just telling you other ones that we have on our task force, <laughs> as they're all looking, sorry. Um, we have Jim from uh, the Sheboygan Police Department, um, and we have um, another Sunny Ridge representative, um, Ginny from the Alzheimer's Association. So we have a really good representation of a lot of different agencies that are coming together as part of this task force. It has been really remarkable how much and how quickly our group has really um, reached many of our goals already. The, the task force has really only been meeting since February. It's kind of remarkable when I think back to that, how much we've really gotten done. It's kind of a joke in our group that we thought when we started we were only going to meet once a month, and we probably meet at least once a week. Uh, and we thought that our to-do list was relatively short, and every time we go to a meeting we have 10 more things that we've added to our list. The very first thing we did was we created a whole process that went through every step of this whole dementia crisis, from preventing the crisis to de-escalation of the crisis. The behaviors continue, the dispatch center and how that was happening, the emergency response, the emergency department, a short-term stabilization option, and then ongoing review. So just to touch a base on all of these just a bit. We have put in a lot of our resources into this prevention of the behaviors. We have right now focused on facilities in our community, and we are talking about all of Sheboygan County and really working with all of the facilities to work on getting their staff trained specifically related to crisis behaviors. If we can prevent the behaviors from happening, we won't have to go on through the rest of the process. Next, I'm going to move into the comm center. Uh, this has been a really interesting um, part of the whole process. Uh, we noticed very early on that there was no countywide really system on how these calls were handled. Um, and it became quite a problem, and depending upon who answered the 911 call, different resources were being sent to different places throughout the county. It was a little confusing. Christy from the comm center has been wonderful in helping us be that um, conduit between the, t the task force and, and their department. Um, so we have worked very hard with um, the comm center to make sure that when a call comes in that is dementia specific and all the facilities are now being trained that they need to use the word dementia, it is now shifting the resources from being a law enforcement issue instead to being a medical issue. So we are really working to make sure that there is a paradigm shift in our county that we are treating these not as a law enforcement issue. These people with dementia do not have intent. They are not causing a disruption on purpose. It's a medical issue. Just to give you some basis, this is pretty new. This is pretty new in Wisconsin. There are not a lot of other counties who are doing this, if any at this point, to be honest. 
So that countywide dispatch change that we have made as part of the task force will be taking effect uh, December 1st. Um, it has been a lot of work to work through that, um, but really will have a huge impact. So now when uh, 911 is called in a facility, instead of law enforcement being the first line of resources, EMS will be the first line of resources. Really big paradigm shift and we're really excited to see that, that the people are gonna get the correct care. We then have been working with the EMS, um, both, the, both the city through Chuck and through Dan from, that's the other person I forgot to mention, sorry, Dan from Orange Cross is also on our task force, um, that all of the EMS is being trained to work right in the facilities or in homes and try to de-escalate the behavior in the home rather than having to have them leave and go to, a go to an ER because that's traumatic for someone with dementia. So that also has been a really big shift. We're doing a lot of training for the EMS and for law enforcement. And it's been really encouraging to see the positive responses we've been getting going out to the different departments throughout the county. We then have been working with the emergency department um, to streamline that, uh, that whole scenario in the emergency room so that the person with dementia gets through that faster and with as least amount of testing and difficulty as they can. We also have a, quite an issue in our county that we don't have a place for these people to go if they're not able to go back to their home, whether that be a facility or their own home. Um, right now, if somebody is still quite um, a challenging person with their behaviors, they are actually being sent outside of our county, which in our opinion is kind of sad. That's difficult for a family member and for the person with dementia to be sent to a facility outside of the county. So we are working on a short-term stabilization facility in Sheboygan County um, so that we can get the behavior stabilized before then they're able to go back to their home environment. We know that this is a lot of change and we know that our task force is very much dedicated to making sure that these changes are going well. The plan is not just to throw it out there to everybody and say good luck. The plan is really to then have a systematic approach to review. So we're working with EMS uh, police and with uh, the dispatch to be able to flag these calls when they came, come in and then follow them in a review process all the way through the system to ensure that our new protocols are actually working. Where is, there, where is it working well? Where do we need some more improvements? So that will be part of the ongoing review process. So working to, up to date, what we have done. I kind of mentioned all of these. Um, we did have a community conversation uh, a couple weeks ago where we invited all of the facilities to attend. We had over 50 people in attendance, which was really great. Um, we already are seeing improvements. Just the fact that we have this interdisciplinary team coming together. Um, a lot of us did not know each other, and now we all know each other as a contact, and that's already worked very well to solve a couple of difficult situations that have come up in the recent months. Again, we are doing very specific training to all the different departments, and we as a task force are creating the training. So you can imagine that's, we are all gonna get A's in PowerPoints, because um, we're making quite a few of them. Um, but we're doing specific training for EMS, specific training for law enforcement, specific training for the direct care staff. Again, training and training and training, that's how we're gonna prevent this from continuing to be an issue. So the next steps, all of our training is really gonna start mostly next week, actually. We have a training set up for all the direct staff. It's a, it's a free training. As of now, we have over 100 people signed up for that training. So that's exciting. Um, the stabilization process, um, that short-term facility that we were looking at, that will be one of our next steps. The flagging and reviewing. And then the program sustainability. How is this working? How can we improve it? And then the other, our vision actually, early on I shared with you that we had our vision. Our vision actually is that we are planning on taking this out to other communities throughout the state. Um, we had meetings today with some of the facilities who weren't able to be at our meeting a couple weeks ago and uh, met with three facilities today and they were so excited about what we're doing and one facility in particular has already said, we need, we need you to get out to other communities. Um, so we're excited that Sheboygan County can be highlighted as a county that does well in dealing with crisis and dementia. So that is the vision to carry that on throughout the counties and throughout the state. Mary, thank you so much for enlightening us on the work that you're doing, and my kudos to the uh, Crisis Task Force. Thank you very much. Thank you.
Okay, now we'll uh, go back to approval of minutes from our last council meeting. Alder Person Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. Make a motion to approve. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Next is public forum. City Clerk. There is no one this evening. Thank you. Uh, next is Mayor's appointments. City Attorney. There you go. 1.6 is appointments uh, by the mayor appointing Brian uh, Mahorich uh, to the King Park neighborhood uh, as the King Park neighborhood primary for the mayor's neighborhood leadership cabinet. Andrea Mace is the King Park neighborhood alternate. Jean Grady is the Volworth Park North Point neighborhood primary. And Beth Cunard is the Volworth Park North Point neighborhood alternate. Those will lie over. Next move on to uh, confirmation of mayor's appointments. City clerk, city attorney. There are two, uh, both to the Mayor's Neighborhood Leadership Cabinet, uh, Paul Aparicio for the Historic Grant Neighborhood as the primary, and C.J. Grace for the Historic Grant Neighborhood as the alternate. Thank you. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to confirm. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion? No? Seeing it, uh, can the clerk call the roll? Have a nice motion passes next and we'll go on to mayor's announcements I'd like to call up uh, Roberta Paneski at this time and Mary Shellhorn we have a proclamation whereas the Sheboygan Symphony Orchestra is celebrating their hundredth anniversary during 2018 2019 season and the Sheboygan Symphony Orchestra is the longest continually operating orchestra in state history and the Sheboygan Symphony Orchestra currently calls the Stephanie H. Weil Center for the Performing Arts its home. And whereas the Sheboygan Symphony Orchestra is one of the three, uh, three orchestras in the state to have its own chorus, which is celebrating its 25th year uh, anniversary this season. And whereas the Sheboygan Symphony Orchestra has provided opportunities for young musicians to perform in youth ensembles for more than three decades, and whereas the Sheboygan Symphony Orchestra annually performs a spring children's concert that has reached more than 40,500 local elementary students over the past 25 years, and whereas the Sheboygan Symphony Orchestra is a cultural gem and an important nonprofit organization that contributes to the high quality of life in Sheboygan County. Now, therefore, I'm Mike Vanderstein, Mayor of the City of Sheboygan, to hereby by wish to recognize and extend my personal thanks and appreciation to the Sheboygan Symphony Orchestra on the occasion of their 100th anniversary and urge all of our residents to take the opportunity to enjoy the experience, beauty, and majesty of symphonic music. I'm happy to present this to you, and thank you again for all your work. It's a great task that you've achieved in having this organization be a, a cultural part of our community community for a hundred years. Would you like to say a few words, Roberta? Yeah. Thank you very much. And if you think about a hundred years, that's through both world wars, it's through Afghanistan, it's through a whole lot of stuff, and we kept it going. Now, our challenge is to keep it going for the next century, and Here's our new season. It's quite wonderful. Our opening concert is this Saturday, and we encourage you to come and attend. And your attendance thanks our musicians, our chorus members. We'd also like to thank our individual donors and our business donors. That's what keeps us going. So thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. We appreciate it. Just smile. <laughs> Bunny ears for you. 
Yeah, next, I'd like to ask Laura Rainitz to come forward. A proclamation, whereas established in September of 1990 as a domestic abuse program, Safe Harbor of Sheboygan provides prevention, intervention, education, and outreach services to empower individuals, families, and the community to end domestic violence, abuse, and sexual assault. Safe Harbor's mission is to create safe and respectful community that is free of interpersonal violence. And whereas the staff of Safe Harbor have supported over 757 victims and their families, answered 4,900 calls to those needing service, and provided 6,558 nights of shelter to over 190 clients. And whereas the, the U.S. In the U.S., nearly 20 people per minute are victims of domestic violence by a domestic partner, which equates to 10 million women and men per year. And whereas one in five women and one in seven men have experienced severe physical violence by an intimate partner in his or her lifetime, intimate partner violence accounts for 15% of all violent crime. And whereas this month we recognize the survivors and victims of abuse whose courage inspires us all, we recommit to offering a helping hand to those who need it most and remind them that they are not alone. Now, therefore, I, Mike Vandersteen, by virtue of the authority vested in me as mayor of the city of Sheboygan, do hereby proclaim 2018 as Domestic Violence Awareness Month and encourage all citizens to join me in recognizing the work of Safe Harbor and take a stand against domestic violence in our community. Community. I'm very happy to present this to Laura and thank her for all the work that her organization does. Laura, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, as October is Domestic Violence Awareness Month, I wanted to bring um, the hardworking staff that we have. This is just a few of our staff who do this work um, on the uh, on the front lines every day. And um, this is Pa, our Southeast Asian specialist. Mary Kay is our therapist. Kayla is our youth specialist. Deb is our associate director. Chrissy is our community outreach specialist. And Natalie is our sexual assault specialist. And that, again, is just a little under half of our staff. But we really appreciate you taking the time to recognize the work that these guys do every day um, in supporting the community, in trying to make sure it's a safe place to live for everyone. <clears throat> Excuse me. And all that we ever ask is that if you or someone you know who's suffering from the effects of domestic violence or sexual assault, that you refer them to us. Um, we were lucky enough to have the mayor come in and um, I think for the first time um, have a tour. So I'd like to extend that to anyone here. Reach out and talk to me if you'd like a tour or to know a little bit more about what we do. Um, just give us a call. We'd be happy to fill you in. Um, we know that domestic violence knows no uh, socioeconomic educational bounds. And so I think if you look around the, this room or any room you're in, you, you'll know that a victim is there. So just ask that you be an advocate as we are every day. And I thank you for this honor. Our October uh, city newsletter, the Sheboygan Insider, was posted today. And uh, if one would like to get a copy of that, it's uh, available on our website. Just look for a banner ad and click on that, and you'll be able to view the entire document. But just a few highlights. Uh, today was Park Shelter Reservation kickoff day for 2019. And I believe we had over 100 people waiting in line at 7 o'clock this morning to reserve dates for this coming year. Um, just uh, want to make you aware that uh, Sheboygan is conducting a livable community survey, and uh, there's an article on that and a, and a link that you can go to to take that, uh, that uh, survey to help us become a more livable community. And our curbside leaf collection will begin in the middle of the month on October 15th and continue till mid-November. And then also our clerk wants to remind us that voters may come into the clerk's office to either register or vote absentee until Friday, November 2nd. So they'll be in the old Social Security office across from City Hall on 9th Street uh, to accept anybody who'd like to vote early. Thank you.
Okay, next we'll go on to hearings. Item 2.1 is hearing number four of 1819, pursuant to a notice published and the personal notices sent by the city clerk. There is a hearing scheduled for this evening to amend the city of Sheboygan's future land use map of the city's comprehensive plan in order to change the land use classification of a property located at 1436 South 15th Street from class employment to class multifamily residential classification. Is there anyone who wishes to be heard? Is there anyone who wishes to be heard? Is there anyone who wishes to be heard? Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to close the hearing. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Let's see, we have to take a roll call vote, so please enter your votes into the system. Seven eyes. Motion passes. Next is uh, hearing number five of 2019. Pursuant to a notice published in the personal notices sent by the city clerk, there is a hearing scheduled for this evening to amend the city of Sheboygan's official zoning map to change the use district classification of a property located at 1436 South 15th Street from class urban industrial to class urban residential. Is there anyone wishing to be heard? Is there anyone wishing to be heard? I'll, Chad Pelichek. Just in full disclosure, for those wondering where 1436 North 15th Street is, this would be the Vandervark property, and there's a developer from St. Louis that's interested in developing that into a multifamily housing uh, development as we move forward, so this is the first step in that process. Thank you for that information. And one last call, is there anyone wishing to be heard? Yes, sir. Please come forward to the podium. My name is Dave, 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 David Adamovich. I am the owner of the property on Broadway Avenue, 16414. We have a machine shop located across the road from Cablevision. And I'm just wondering how this zone, zone, zoning, right now we're zoned ur urban industrial. I'd like to know exactly how this is going to affect my machine shop now and in the future. Chad, can you uh, give any light to that one? Your property will continue to be zoned urban industrial and will have no effect on operations mm -hmm. at that location. This property is separate from your property, so there should be no concerns with your property moving forward. Case closed. It sounds good to me. <laughs> thank you very much for coming up to speak, sir. And thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else who wishes to be heard? Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a, a motion to close the hearing. Second. We have a motion and a second to close the hearing. Would the clerk please call the roll? Seven eyes. Motion passes. Under the consent agenda, items um, three, include items two through th items 3.5. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to accept and file all ROs, accept and adopt all RCs, and pass all resolutions and ordinances. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on any of the items on the consent agenda? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll for passage? Seven eyes. Motion passes. Under reports of officers, items 4.1 and 4.2 will lay over. 
Items 4.3 through 4.12 will be referred to various committees. Under resolutions, items 5.1 through 5.3 will again be referred to various committees. Under reports of committees, 6.1 is RC number 144 of 1819 by the Public Works Committee. Tumor's referred resolution number 95 of 1819 by Alderperson Wolf, authorizing the purchasing agent to enter into a contract for the purchase and installation of new baseball park lighting for, uh, for the Wildwood Sheboygan A's Mary A. Testweed Canal Baseball Park Complex. And, uh, on a cost share basis with the Sheboygan A's baseball organization and recommends approving the substitute resolution. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make, I make a, a motion. I move to accept and adopt RC number 144-1819 as presented and to approve substitute resolution number 951819 with two additional changes. First, first change, the portion of the, of the 14th uh, whereas clause, which refers to a loan from the city of Sheboygan to the athletic club, shall be revised to state payment of this payment to the city on 19th, 19 payments of $1,333.55 on a monthly basis beginning on November 20, 2018 and ending in May 2020, and one payment of $27,467.99 in June 2020, which represents the payment of $51,500 in principal plus interest at the rate of 2% per annum. And the agreement with the Sheboygan Athletics Club shall be revised to give effect to this change. Second, the completion date in the contract with Altmeyer Electric Inc., which is attached to the resolution, shall be revised to January 15, 2019. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. That, doc that motion is before us right now. Is there any questions or discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Seven eyes. Motion passes. <laughs> Item 6.2 is RC number 145 of 1819 by the Finance and Personnel Committee. To whom was referred resolution number 98 of 1819 by Alderpersons Reinfleisch and Born, providing the sale of approximately $5,100,000 in general obligation refunding bonds and approximately $3,650,000 in general obligation refunding bonds and recommends approving the resolution. Alderperson Reinfleisch. I move that we accept and adopt and pass the resolution. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Um, Marty, would you please go ahead? There you go. I just want to uh, give a little extra information as tonight uh, in front of you, there would have been an additional packet that was handed out um, and that has some uh, updated information regarding a portion of the borrowing. Uh, the change in that uh, packet that you received increases the planned borrowing from 3.65 million up to 3.8 million, which is actually a result of capitalizing a second year of interest. So 2019 and 2020, so approximately $150,000. Um, and that was done in order to be a bit more accurate or maybe even a little bit more conservative in our approach on some of the construction estimates that would be uh, connected to TID 18 as of 1-1-2019 for the increment. Um, tonight's resolution is just a set sail or a heads up resolution. So it isn't statutorily authorizing um, the amount or the estimate of the borrowing that is being planned. Um, for in actuality, the borrowing that could actually come about um, will be either 
more or less than 3.8 million, uh, most likely. Uh, the impacts there could be a result of premium, which would reduce the borrowing or even interest uh, fluctuations. Uh, as a result, um, or I should say in connection to that in the packet, there is um, some revised interest calculations that Carol Worth, our consultant from Wisconsin Public Finance Professionals, provided us from when the information was prepared for the Finance Committee meeting versus now. Uh, there was a slight uptick in the uh, interest rates, in, in a sense the true interest cost, or TIC. The original was 3.845% and now is 3.975%. But as we get closer to the actual sale of these bonds, those amounts could change as well. Um, so really it's more a matter of this is just a heads up for the council that there is planned borrowing. There is no change to the $5.1 million of tax exempt city hall. This is only a, uh, an estimate increase on the uh, taxable TID 18 borrowing. Thank you very much for that information. Uh, any other discussion? Alderperson Donahue. Mayor, I think it might be helpful, and if Marty can do it, just to explain to all of us what capitalized interest means. Marty, please go ahead. Yep. So the capitalized interest, when we, per when we uh, put these borrowings out, capitalized interest is you are borrowing the amount to pay for that interest. So it becomes part of the principal, part of the debt, debt payments going forward. So really what you're doing is you're increasing your borrowing to cover those interest payments. Uh, the reason that was done on this one was because there also is the $10.5 million NAN that is out there that has a $380,000 interest payment, and now we'll be capitalizing two additional uh, years on this these borrowings as well. And that's all going right back to the January 1 TID increment that we need to have developed um, to be able to cover those costs. Thank you. Any other discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Seven eyes. Motion passes. Item 6.3 is RC number 146 of 1819 by the Finance and Personnel Committee. To whom is referred resolution number 99 of 1819 by Alderperson Rindfleisch and Boren authorizing a transfer of appropriations in the 2018 budget, K-9 Fire Department, sale of metal, and recommends approving the resolution. Alderperson Wolf. Make a motion to accept and adopt and pass resolution. I'll second. Thank you. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Seven eyes. Motion passes. Item 6.4 is RC number 147 of 1819 by the Finance and Personnel Committee, to whom was referred resolution number 100 of 1819 by Alderpersons Ryan Fleisch and Bourne, authorizing the transfer of appropriations in the 2018 budget for the AARP grant and recommends approving the resolution. Alderperson Ryan Fleisch. We accept and adopt and pass the resolution. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll. Seven eyes. Motion passes. Item 6.5 is RC number 148 of 1819 by the Finance and Personnel Committee, to whom was referred RC number 86 of 1819 and RC number one, uh, excuse me, 291 of 1718 by the Finance and Personnel Committee and RO number 272 of 1718 by the City Clerk, submitting a claim from Whitfley CPAs and Consultants regarding the creation and preservations Partners, Inc. for recovery of alleged unlawful taxes for real estate property taxes in the uh, year of 2017 and recommends filing a document. Alderperson Reinfleisch. I move we accept the file. Second. 
Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Seven eyes. Motion passes. Under general ordinances, items 7.1 and 7.2 will be referred to various committees. Under matters laid over, 8.1 is RO number 117 of 1819 by the City Planning Commission, to whom was referred general ordinance number 15 of 1819 by Alderperson Sorensen, amending the City of Sheboygan's future land use map of the Sheboygan Comprehensive Plan to change the land use classification of property located at 1436 South 15th Street, parcel number 5928151339101. Three nine one from class employment to class multifamily residential and recommends the substitute ordinance. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to accept and file and pass the substitute ordinance. Second. Thank you for your mo that motion in support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Seven eyes. Motion passes. Next is general ordinance number 115 of 1819 by the City Planning Commission to whom was referred RO number 108 of 1819 by the City Clerk. General ordinance 16 of 1819 by Alderperson Sorensen amending the City of Sheboygan's official zoning map for parcel 59281513. 391 from class urban industrial to class urban residential and recommends to accept and file the RO and approve the substitute ordinance. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to accept and file and pass uh, substitute ordinance. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Uh, City Planner Pelichek. I just want to mention that this has a caveat in this ordinance that <clears throat> if they aren't able to purchase the land by December 31st of 2019, this property will revert back to urban industrial. Um, this was put in there as a, um, as a proceed forward with getting some financing from WIDA uh, to fund some of this development. And if should that not occur, then it will go back to the original zoning, which is urban industrial. Thank you for that information. Any other discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Seven eyes. Motion passes. Under other matters received after the agenda was published, City Attorney. Nine point one is a resolution uh, by all the persons Donahue and Sorensen authorizing the appropriate city officials to execute the evidence.com prosecutor services agreement by and between Axon Enterprise Inc. and the city of Sheboygan with regard to the use of Axon Enterprise Inc. products and services. 9.2 is an RO by the city clerk <laughs> submitting various license applications for the period ending December 31, 2018, June 30, 2019, and June 30, 2020. Both those documents will be referred to the licensing hearings and public safety committee. Next is 9.3, a motion to reconsider resolution number 93 of 1819. Alderperson Ryan Fleisch. I move that we, for reconsideration of resolution number 93, 1819. Second. I'd like to ask the city to, attorney to uh, please explain a little bit about this motion. Uh, the resolution was passed uh, at the last meeting. A, a motion to reconsider under Robert's rules can be made uh, at the next meeting, and so that's what's happened. Okay, and then um, we'll be calling to roll on this motion. Is there any other discussion first? Alderperson Rindfleisch? Alderperson Boren would like us to reconsider as not all the members of the council were at the last meeting and he feels there might be a different vote on this issue. This is on the garbage fee and his, on a garbage fee continuing. Um, if we 
brought to reconsider tonight in 9.3, I'll be asking us to put it on hold until we have a more full council present. Alderperson Donahue. Um, <clears throat> I would urge uh, uh, my fellow alders to vote against this motion to reconsider. I think we had a full and robust discussion last time with 9 out of 10 present. And the, there is, it was 8 out of 10. 8 out of 10. Okay. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Um, this is a matter that has, this garbage fee has been discussed uh, for a long time. It has been present uh, as a fee in the city for a number of years. It has this two year, it has had this two year sunset provision. Um, and it is, and while I can understand that happening at an initial, the first time or the second time, as we explored whether or not this fee was a good idea or whether, uh, whether we should continue it, whether it was an economic burden, whether the city really needed the money, what the state legislature was going to do with respect to fees that were imposed by municipalities because of their restriction on uh, levy limits. Um, enough is enough. This has become a part of our standard budgeting process. Nothing has changed. We had, as I say, I f from my perspective, a robust discussion of this, and I just, don't see the reason that we need to do this again. Sometimes we win resolutions and sometimes we lose, but I would suggest that at all times we should just move on, and so I would urge my fellow alders to vote no on the resolution to reconsider. Thank you for those comments. Alderperson Sorensen. Um, I was gonna say similar comments that Alderperson Donahue said. Um, I believe that we've discussed this already. I believe also, you know, it wouldn't be doing justice to the council making a reconsidering motion after we have less people than we did last time. Um, and I also really uh, believe that the, the city essentially needs these, these, these funds to, for budgeting projections soon. I trust all our city staff from DPW to finance up to the city administrator um, to, to make the right decisions too. And I think the appropriate time, if we ever did want to reconsider this, if this ever was um, an issue, we can always discuss it during the budget season. Um, and I also think it's a little goofy also that we're considering reviewing just the garbage fee. Um, if you want to reconsider and bring up a discussion every single year about every single particular fee, I think that just gets a little obnoxious in my opinion. So I'll be voting against this. Thank you. Any other discussion? Uh, City Attorney, what uh, vote is needed for passage or denial? A majority. Okay, it's just, and, but that's just for reconsideration. That just puts yep, it out. I understand that. This is just for the reconsideration. Will the clerk please call the roll? Three eyes, four no's. Motions um, defeated. Okay, we, then we can go on to item 9.4. No? No. It didn't pass, so you don't need to do 9.4. Okay, then we'll go on to a closed, temp, a closed session that's contemplated. All the person Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to convene in closed session under the exemption provided in section 19.85 sub 1 sub E, uh, Wisconsin stats, where com uh, competitive and bargaining reasons require a closed session re regarding possible purchase of public property owned by the Union Pacific Railroad. Thank you for that motion and support. All those in favor, please, or, uh, please call the roll. Seven eyes. Motion passes. Uh, we'll take a brief recess to clear the chambers. And for our viewers at home, we'll be adjourning in closed session. So we won't, this will end our transmission for this evening. Um, I don't think that's true. I don't think that's true. No, we're going to be coming back. Committee at a whole?
will be coming back. Yeah. Okay, so our council meeting will be finished, but we will be coming back to reconvene a committee of the whole meeting later, and uh, that will be done after the uh, closed session is held. We stand adjourned for about five minutes.